Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, so this is going to be, is this working? I can't hear myself. Okay, good. Um, so this is going to be for, how, how do you get to the city budget? What, what's the structure of it? Um, when you leave tonight, hopefully you will be able to find the budget documents online, which is where they live. Otherwise, they're, you know, a couple phone books put together. So um, you also hopefully will know how to find answers to key questions within the budget document itself. And you will also hopefully know how to research a capital improvement project um, and answer key questions about it. So, you know, that park that you want down the street from you, the sidewalks you want repaired, hopefully after tonight you will be able to do that on your own um, and then be able to go down to the city council and say, how come my park's not moving? Or what, what happened to my library hours? Or yay, good on you because you brought back more library hours. So I'm going to cover a lot tonight. There's going to be a lot of numbers. Um, just kind of don't freak, just relax with it because you know it's there on the website and I'm around if you need more assistance. So th there's going to be a lot, but we'll do it together. And I will have opportunities to ask questions throughout the presentation. I'm just going to kind of do it in chunks. Uh, and I just want to let you know, I just want to make sure that you realize what we're, what we're doing tonight is looking at fiscal year uh, 2013. So our budget that we've been working with since last July. The, the new budget, the mayor's proposed budget comes out on April 15th. So we're doing this now so that when that budget comes out and that document is released, you can take a quick peek at it yourself um, before budget hearings start, which budget hearings start in May. So we'll have a little time to look at what, what the mayor's proposing um, and tell the city council what we like, what we don't like, what we want changed. <coughs> so just also, because we're, what's, what's going on is, you know, we're starting the new budget year in July. To create a city budget is really the work of a year. So, for example, the CIP process started, the decision-making process started last September. They started bringing the list together. So, when you see the budget this year that is released on the April 15th, the majority of the work that went into that is from the last administration. This will not be a Vilner budget. This is, is majority a Sanders budget. The thing about it, though, which is great, is we can start advocating with the new administration about what we want to see in a fully filmer budget next year. He's open to that. Uh, and to be clear again, a fiscal year starts, in Jul starts July 1st and runs through June 30th. And when you go to the city website, um, you go to www.sandiego.gov, and you go to departments, um, up at the top, you'll come to the financial management page, and that is where you see, that's where they'll post the budget, so there's something there that says proposed budget. Um, and that's, so this is the kind of the, the top uh, table of contents. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain how to, um, how to walk through and get a snapshot of, the, a financial snapshot of the city. But first, what is a budget? Um, basically, the budget is a plan for how the city expects to use its income and savings to provide services to residents. It shows the types and amounts of services that we will expect to get as residents throughout the fiscal year. So to look at a financial snapshot of the city, it's, um, it's quite the table. So it's... It, it spreads out over four pages. So as you scroll down, you're like, wait, what is going on here? The way you read it is you take the pages and they're, they're meant to be tiled so that you get a full table. <coughs> and so it starts off over here. What we're looking at is the general fund. Now the general fund <coughs> is kind of, it's, it's where we have our money that has the least strings attached. Everything else has strings attached, but the general fund is where we can really argue about how we're going to spend that money. And so, if we're looking at the general fund, 
the first column over here is estimated reserves and fund balance. So it's kind of what are we starting with for this year. And then we move on to CIP and operating revenue, the next. Okay, well, what does the city expect to basically earn this year? And then total resources. Okay, so we're entering this this year. What do we have to that we can spend, right? Um, and then it goes on. The next piece is our, what do we plan on spending? What are our costs? So we have CIP project expenditures. It, it's got little lines saying that in FY 2013, we didn't expect to spend anything on CIP out of the general fund. And then we've got operating expenditures, which just says the day-to-day -day operations, like paying for the, the water and the utility, you know, water and electricity. And then if you go down a little bit, on the cross to the next, it's like, okay, sorry, <laughs> total expenditures, how everything put together, how much did we expect that we would spend? And then we move on to reserves, which is basically savings for the city. And then at the end, estimated fund balance, what do we expect to have left over when we finish the fiscal year? That's for the general fund. Again, that's, that's the, the fund that has the least amount of strings attached to it. So what does the actual financial situation of the city, what did it look like when we passed this budget, when the city passed this budget last year? So, you know, these four pages, you go down to where it says total combined budget. So for FY um, 2013, which is what we're in right now, the city expected to, the city started off with $1.3 billion in our estimated reserves and fund balance. We expected to quote unquote earn um, our revenues of $2.6 billion. So the city expected to start off with total resources of $3.9 million. And then through all of the funds we expected to spend, the city expected to spend uh, almost $215 million on capital improvement projects. And then the day-to-day -day operating expenses, the operating expenditures, the city expected that those would be $2.5 billion. So paying for our librarians, having the, the, you know, the water and the power at our libraries, for a total expenditures of $2.8 billion. Uh, we expected to spend almost $17 million of previous year's uh, funds, funds that we had accumulated in previous years, and we had reserves of $858 million, more or less, <coughs> at the beginning of last fiscal year. And we thought we'd have $303 <coughs> million left over. Um, and then, you, so that's a, fi that's a financial snapshot of the city. We, at the beginning of last year, we expected, uh, July 1st, we expected that we had, or we, we did have $850, eight million dollars in our savings account pretty nice and then if you want to understand special funds other funding sources it, you can do that throughout this whole table um, so that's just kind of the reason to understand why to look at this is for example next year um, so the the budget cycle that we're entering into that starts, so FY 2014, that starts July 1st, we're expecting a $40 million shortfall. It's huge. Yes, it's true, it's frightening. Um, but there's gonna be a whole lot of discussion on how do we fill that? How are we gonna you know, make up for that shortfall? And being able to read the budget will help you to understand the arguments that, that folks are making and make your own analysis. And really the questions as we enter into the budget cycle should be, okay, who pays for the things that we, who's going to be paying, is it, is it equal across communities? Who's going to be benefiting from the budget, the way that it's set up? Who's going to be deciding these things? Is it us? Is it someone else? And is there anybody that's being left out of either the decision making process or of, of the benefits? And the city, so we were looking at our reserves. The city council reserve policy says that we need to have 
to be healthy and safe in case of emergency, we need 8% of our budget uh, put away in, in reserves. Well, we're at about 13.8%. So, as we're entering into this $40 million shortfall, there's going to be discussion of how do we fill it? Well, we're saving money for a rainy day in our reserves. Well, it could be argued that you know, we're saving for a rainy day in the midst of a monsoon. So, again, you can find out, you know, how much money do we have, and you can start thinking through, well, what are the ways that I would approach this? What would I do? What do I want my council member to do? So that's kind of, that's all you want. Are there any questions? Did I, does anybody have any questions for, yes, Can you explain that again? Because I think I didn't understand. 8% of the budget is reserved, but we have 13% of budget in reserve? Right now, yes. We have, uh, the estimate was, um, let's see, in, at the end of the calendar year, so the mid-year of the budget, they, they said that we had about 13.8% uh, in reserves. So that's a good thing. That is a good thing. That's money that we can try to we can say, well, as a city, we could decide, no, we really would prefer to only be debt. We have 8% in our reserves. Let's use that other money to fill the shortfall. However, of course, you know, there, there's other things like, what if we're gonna have a big shortfall next year and the next year? But yes, we're, we're in terms of our savings account, our reserves, we're a healthy city. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, that money that we have in reserve, does that affect our bond rating with the agencies that we borrow money from? Yes. Um, so the question was, does, does our, our reserve amount uh, impact our rate, our bond rating? Um, the, the kind of the short answer or the theory out there is yes, as long as we have a good, healthy reserve uh, where if something disastrous happens, or, you know, we have a good emergency reserve fund, we're okay. Um, also, but however, if you have too big of a reserve and you're not actually spending the money on things that you need to spend money on, the bond market also takes that into account. So things like where you've got a big reserve account and major capital assets of the city are falling apart, or we're getting sued a lot for, I don't know, palm trees falling on people. Um, these are things that the bond market also pays attention to. So they, what the bond market really wants to see is they want to see that we're good fiscal stewards. Um, and they're pretty smart, savvy folks out there. Any other questions on this section? All right, let's get into something a little bit more. Oh, yes, Matt. Um, if, if we're at 8% is what we're supposed to have, and we're up 13%, then shouldn't the council make a decision that they either want to increase the requirement to 13% or then say that 8% is where it was to be? I mean, why not stick to the budget that they laid out and not change or change it? I mean, what's the rationale to not advising, not going by what your advice is to reserve? Um, you know, that's what they can do in this next budget cycle is actually address that and, and either take us back down to 8% or change the, the council policy. Yes, sir. I just meant that uh, with, with our um, the economic recession that we've been going through since 07. Um, don't know whether, you know, it's, it's a policy question as to whether or not a large reserve is what we want when we're, we're talking about service cuts. So it is it's a policy question. Good, difficult question for the council members. Yes, Chief. And just a little mathematical thing, Nate. Um, the difference between the 8% and 13% is 5%, and I just did 5% of what the budget is, and that just comes out to 6 million. So with 140 million, we still got a long way to go. 40 million, not 140. Oh, 40 million is yeah. the shortfall? 40 million. No. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, good Lord, 140. Okay. Okay, let's move on to let's move on to the second volume. The department. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you to my AV team. Um, let's move on to the departmental detail, volume two. This is where we get to the fun stuff, like the departments, like Park and Rec. What am I thinking? Uh -huh. um, so this is where you actually can find out what's going to happen with libraries, with Park and Rec, with oh, I don't know, tourism, tourism. Um, so within this, 
there's some really interesting information. Um, the city does actually, they, they review the goals of the departments that they're supposed to meet through this budget. Um, and so, you know, reviewing these, you can look at them and say, you know, is this department that I'm interested in, are they meeting the goals? Do I feel that they're meeting the goals that, they, that they're set out to do? Um, could they be doing better, in my opinion? Or are these the right goals? Do I agree with the goals that the city says that this department should be should be meeting, um, or should they be changed, or are, is there something missing? And then also in the department budget, we have a department summary, which is kind of the snapshot of how things are going to change in that department for the, in the, for the coming fiscal year. So the top line is positions, and that's actually staff. Those are full-time positions. So. For FY 2013, um, we expected to have 868.15, yes, a fraction of a person, um, full-time staff working in, in uh, Park and Rec. And if you see on the, the, last, uh, the last column is the change from the, from the previous fiscal year. So that's kind of the snapshot you can see are we adding staff? Are we losing staff? Are we expecting to spend more money? Are we expecting to uh, bring in more money? So for the change from FY 2012 to 2013, we actually added nearly 28 full-time staff. And you'll see here that um, Park and Rec brings in about, or spends about $113 million and they bring in in revenue about $67 million. So that means that it is not a self-sustaining department. So they'll need to bring money in from other departments generally from the, they're being subsidized generally from the general fund. Which is kind of our taxes, which is what the general fund's for. Um, you can also look at expenditures by different uh, parts of the department or within the department. Uh, they also have a section called significant budget adjustments. This is another place where you can find out what what am I going to be seeing in my in my department? What's going to happen in Parks and Rec? So, for example, in FY 2013, some of the budget adjustments um, was were that we were going to be mowing athletic fields more often. We would be taking care of those turf fields a lot better. Also. What, we might even have some turf at some of our fields, um, depending on where you are. Um, and then the other big thing that happened last year, which was really good, was that we increased uh, operating hours at 56 of the rec centers from 40 hours a week to 45 hours a week. Now, um, I believe in 2000 or 2001, we actually had uh, rec centers were open 60 hours a week. So. Um, we're still a lot farther behind. Oh, I really need to use it. Um, we are really are a lot further behind from what the service levels we were at in 2000 or 2001. But this is where you can find out what the city is expecting to have happen um, with your dollars and how that impacts uh, service levels. And then, you know, if you want to understand expenditures by category, there's personnel, there's non-personnel. For example, energy and utilities. Uh, for Park and Rec, we spend about $12 million on energy and utilities. So water, um, electricity, et cetera. So when they start talking about, should we do solar panels or should we do something water efficient? You know, these are things that you can look at here. Get your own ideas on what you think should happen. And I, I always find this interesting as well. So they have revenues by category. And remember, this is, I'm looking through at the general fund for Park and Rec. Um, charges for services, that means user fees. So when you go to a, a rec center and you pay for something at a rec center, that's this money. Um, it is about half of, let's see, is that right? Um, it's about, yeah, it's about half of the revenues for Park and Rec, but it only covers about one third of the total expenses of the current services we're getting from the Park and Rec department. And one thing that might happen, it often happens, it's a favorite uh, 
discussion topic at budget hearings is, well, let's increase user fees. Let's make people pay more. So you might be hearing that this year, we've got a $40 million shortfall. Let's have the residents pay more. So when you hear that, think about how will that affect my community? How's that going to affect me? If you know a child that goes to the rec center needs to pay more to access a service or a program at that rec center, what does that mean for your community? Because your council member will want to know that. That will be important to them. Same thing with, I'll say the same thing about libraries. Should we charge more for overdue books? Should we charge more for these things? How would that impact you? How would that impact a child in your community? Um, and again, your council members, they're there for you. You need to tell them how what you think. Um, and then, and then the other thing that's in uh, in there, if you're interested, is you can see what uh, different uh, personnel positions are there. Um, so you can um, look at, say, the, the recreation leaders who work with our kids. How many of them are there? How much are they getting paid? Um, they really make about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, not a whole lot for working with our kids. So you can also, when people start talking about, oh well. Maybe we should cut this or cut that. Really, you can go back to the to the department budget. You can go back to other budgets and really start understanding what is it that they're talking about and get your own your own idea of what should happen. Uh, so these are if, yes, it is question time. Yes, sir. Where does the money come from for the transfers in? The transfers in um, often. So the the park and rec department isn't just the general fund. Um, each of the department. Uh, sections has, is broken up and, and reported by different fund types. So uh, there's one that's the, the golf course. There's one that's um, like Mission Bay. I can't remember. Something about Mission Bay. And so sometimes the transfers in will come from those other special funds. Um, they'll transfer it out, say, they'll transfer something out of, say, the, the golf course fund over to the general fund for park and rec. Uh, all the money that, that, that the license and the permits and stuff are, do they also go back to the general fund? Usually licensing and permits goes back to the general fund. Um, but things like golf courses. Uh, golf courses are this little special walled off world within um, the city that's called an enterprise fund. And um, so that's where they'll do transfers in or out. But if you pay a golf course fee, if you're one of those folks that likes to pay uh, golf course fees at the, at the city, um, that stays usually in the golf course pot of money. Yeah. But then again, uh, another question, because they used to have a recycling fund uh, where they used to recycle uh, from the parks and stuff, and also they used to have a, uh, there was another fund that they had from you know, candies and the soda machine. But uh, that money used to go right back into the, into the park. But now it's going back into the general fund, and from the general fund, yeah, um, so the gentleman was just talking about the fact that uh, we used to have things, um, revenue sources, uh, you know, the, the kind of concessions, the candies, and the food that was sold at the, the parks um, would go back into the uh, into the park fund, and now it's being used for the general fund. Um, that's the that's the joy about general fund is they can, it's it, there are there are no strings attached. You can they can move it around. Um, a lot of the funds at the city, um, thanks to state law and other laws, actually have a lot of strings attached. Um, that's especially true with uh, the capital improvement project. Um, let's see. Um, yes, sir, and then Anna. Okay, yes, we go. We see, when we see the transfer here, there is a fiscal year 2011. Mm -hmm. You go down and we look at the numbers. There are 90 million. And the fiscal year 2012, that number, You're asking a question I don't know. I don't know what happened between FY11 and 12 in terms of transfers in. It's a big difference, so it must be something wrong, so we need to know what happened. 
and possibly in the rest of the document it'll say, or you can go back to more than likely FY the 2012 budget would tell you because then they have significant budget adjustments. And within that, you can go and say, okay, well, what happened between 11 and 12 that this transfer in changed so much? Um, Anna, and then the gentleman in the back. Uh, I just want to make a comment that looking at um, personnel is important because the numbers are given as full-time equivalency, but particularly in park and rec and in libraries, a lot of positions are not full-time. They're part-time, some of them are benefited, but there is also a tremendous reliance on hourly staff. And I think when we're, as we think about equity uses, um, equity issues um, and impacts, the reliance upon hourly low wage, generally these are also low wage, without benefits <coughs> has an impact on our communities too. When you look at where those individuals live and what, um, and, and the income, the household income uh, that they have. And so I just would encourage everybody to look at the FTEs with, with the knowledge that they may not actually be full time. So, uh, what, what Anna was just saying is that looking at the um, looking at the actual uh, personnel in the within the department uh, within these department volumes is very important because the city is uh, the city relies fairly heavily on um, hourly employees in a lot of these departments um, and so this actually I mean these are folks that live in our community and. So be getting by on you know hourly wages with no benefits and not having a full time job does impact our community. So that's another place where you can find out you know kind of how the city is staffing. You know um, it's hard to read the budget sometimes, but it does have a lot of very interesting information in it. Um, so the gentleman in the back, and then this gentleman, and then um, we do need to leave some time for our group work at the end. And I'm getting to the juicy part, which is capital improvement projects. So. Yes, sir. So, I mean, like that one as an example, it's going from 14.8 to 28.0 to 34.7. I guess one, what's the definition of adopted? And it's like that even, are they just putting a number in the revenue line to get to the number they need to on the bottom line? Or realistically, do they think they're going to get a 256% increase from 2011 to 2013? You mean for uh, charges and services? Oh, yeah. yeah. Charging for services, they're saying uh, they charged 14.8 two years ago, and now they're going to charge 34.8? Well, they're, they're, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Next. I mean, yes. Um, the idea is we're going to, you know, if we have a shortfall, we'll raise fees um, from an economic standpoint. At some point, you realize you start to have to think about if I raise the fees too much, will I drive people away? But the city assumes that no, if we raise the fees, we might not drive people away. And so um, sometimes the estimates aren't true and then they have quarterly budget monitoring where they say, oh, we were right or we weren't right. And, um, it's always a fun surprise package whenever those things come to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, this gentleman and Daryl. If I understood you correctly, then if you go to the departmental budget, there are footnotes in the budget that will explain major variances. There, major variances, yes, um, and also all of this stuff. Um, I know Donna Fry just left the left the uh, mayor's office, and her so goodness knows what's going to happen with the uh, office of open government, but. It's your right to, whenever you want more detail about the um, about the budget and you can't find it um, in the in the document itself, call your council member, call the city. Um, you know they it, they will help you if you need if there's something that you want to know and you're not getting it, um, call them. Uh, council members, that's what they. Quite honestly, they have staff called con for called constituent services, right? That's what they do. The mayor also has some folks in constituent services. If you need something from the city, there are people that are supposed to help you get it. Um, Beryl and then the gentleman in the orange. Um, in response to the charges for services, I'd also like to think that aside from the user fee going up, that maybe they're adding more programs. They might be adding more programs. There, there's a lot of things that could go into this user fee. They've added programs. 
Um, the fees have gone up. There's a lot of things that would go into this. Um, and so that's why, you know, the budget is a, is a good document for getting a broad brush stroke of what's going to be happening. But then you can say, wait, what, what, what's really going on? And, you know, that's where you can call the department or call financial management or call, you know, and, and get to the bottom of it. Or you could, you know, be a little bit crazy like me and go to the budget and finance committee meetings way too often. Um, <laughs> sir, in the, in the orange? Did you have a question? No. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to CIP, the stuff that we really, really, really enjoy. So this capital improvements lives in volume three. Um, I'm going to catch up with my notes. Um, so what is what are capital improvement projects? Um, I like to talk about them as they're just the really big, expensive stuff that the city has to do. They can be repairs, or they can be new. So, you know, uh, we can get a new road, or we can have a road that's fallen apart and we need to rip it out and put it back in. Um, it could be uh, a library extension. Um, there's a lot of things, it's just, I look at it generally as really big, expensive stuff, as opposed to, and pipes. Yeah, as opposed to the little stuff, like fixing a leak. Um, that's just the day-to-day -day stuff. That doesn't need a big capital expense, hopefully. So when you go to volume three, there are a lot of different sub um, subsections which are very helpful. They have a capital improvements program summary that will, if you read through that, it will tell you probably more than you've ever wanted to know. Um, the good stuff is they'll tell you, there's actually a part that's a section called project prioritization. It will explain how the city ranks uh, capital improvement projects and decides to just end that decides what generally will get funded that year. There's actually a scoring system. Uh, funding sources. I'll, I'll be going into funding sources. I like funding sources. Um, but then uh, they also have departments have different uh, capital improvement project sections. So they'll have actually public utilities, police, fire and rescue, library, park and rec. And then the best part is they have a glossary. Because um, let me tell you, this stuff has got some jargon, but so many special words. And then they also have it indexed by project name. And this section, this CIP section, is really cool because you can find out so much information about the project. I mean, this is the this is really the volume that makes this uh, something that you never ever want to print out in its entirety. <laughs> So, like I said, funding sources. I, I like this because, um, I like this section because, quite honestly, people say, why aren't I, why am I not getting the thing in my neighborhood that I want? This is, these are, this is where they explain the strings that I keep saying, all of this money has strings attached. This is where they explain what the strings are. Um, and my, my favorite part, so, I have a lot of favorite parts. I've become a budget geek. So the capital improvement program, they, they talk about by funding source. So you can say, okay, you know, federal grants, uh, you know, we, in past years, we've got $83 million of federal grants. Um, in prior fiscal years, we, we had four, uh, $43 million for CIP, which came out of the general fund. In, for just uh, 2013, so this year that we're in right now, um, they're expecting by the end of the year to have spent uh, 11 and a half million dollars on CIP projects. Does anybody know what our deferred maintenance, uh, the amount that we have of deferred maintenance in the city that we know about? Anyone? Uh, it's 900 million for deferred maintenance, and it's um, it's one point. I think it's 1.9 million for. Uh, that right? I could be a little bit off. Um, it's about a it, it's about a billion uh, for deferred capital needs, meaning the parks that we need to build, the libraries we need to build, the fire stations, the police stations. So, uh, so we were spending 11.5 11.5 million from um, general fund this year. The, and here's a good one: unidentified funding, stuff that we want to build, but we don't know how to pay for it. Yes. So. 
We've got future fiscal years, $1.2 billion of stuff that we have identified that's sitting on our books that we want to, that we want to build. Question. Yes. When it says uh, prior fiscal years, uh, what like for the 83 million, like what what's like the timeline or like is it? I mean, it's not years. That, so. That's a good question. I don't really know. It's probably like since we've been tracking it, it just looks good. I don't actually know that answer. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. uh, but that's a good question for the financial management department at the city. Okay, and then they break it out. Further in this section, they break out um, which capital improvement projects they're missing money for. So we just took a snapshot. Um, for example, the top line, fire station number 45 in East Mission Valley. You'll find it on page 159 in the book, if you want to know more. It got a priority score of 92, which means it's really important. It's got a high priority. We don't know how to, how to uh, fund it. We're missing about close to $5 million on that one. It's 40, 41% unfunded. Um, now that one, the Skyline Hills Library, um, and those those two, interestingly, um, so the city is, is selling bonds right now. They're raising money, about $100 million a year, for uh, each year for five years. And the fire station, uh, no, number 45, um, is going to be built. They found the funding. Uh, and Skyline Hills Library, as, uh, as well as um, the San Ysidro Library. There were a few things that that made it to the top of the list. Can, does it give a backlog of like where the 55% uh, that they have the money for came from? I think somewhere you can get that. Um, so Beryl just asked, can you figure, is, the, is there a... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, where did the 55% say for... Um, for Skyline, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I've seen it. There was a donor for Right. Yes. There's there's been some private. Some of this stuff has been for private. But you want to actually understand where the funding came that's been identified for some of these things. Um, there is, and it's really wonky. And if you want to send me an email, I can. If other people want to know, there's these things called um, facilities financing plans. If you go to the uh, development services department. Um, the planning department is within development services, and within that there are facilities financing plans, and they will tell you generally where that identified funding is coming from. So how much of it is state grants, how much of it is federal, how much of it is from a developer impact fee. So there is that um, if you want to dig. Um, and if you need me to help you dig, um, my contact information I should put up. Uh, but you can contact us and I will help you dig. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just to clarify, the unidentified funding, let's say for the fire station, does that mean the funding that they need? They're missing that much money. And it, it, it's equal to 40% of whatever they need. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. And then this is, this is what the index looks like. It's very small, but it'll tell you what page number to find what you know, the project you're interested in. Um, so you can go to the glossary, you can go, go to the index, um, and you can find the details of each of the projects, um, except for the funding, um, in this volume. It, it has a description of what's going to be done for that CIP project. Um, it has the estimated cost. It has where it is in the development pr process. Is it in design? Is it, is it pre-construction? Um, and when it's expected to finally be built. And also, most importantly, it has the project manager in case you have any questions or want to talk to somebody about that CIP project. You know who the person is that's they're responsible for getting it done. Um, so now, this, this is when we're gonna give you the opportunity to work with the computers that are out at your tables. So um, we have some worksheets. Um, we're gonna give you the opportunity to explore on your own. And remember, you know, if you have any questions about a project or things you care about, and these things, you don't see them in the budget, then come down and talk, you know, we're going to have the opportunity to tell the city council what we care about. In May, we will have many, many days where we can talk to them about this. If you can't come down, call them. 
Um, and if you need more information, call the city. That's, I mean, we elected them, and they, they, I mean, this is our information. So, uh, did you want to take that first? All right, so we're going to do a little practice so that you can get familiar with a bunch of documents and, ooh, and the CIP work uh, website. So this handy dandy um, sheet that everyone should have gotten, if you didn't get one, you get up front, um, is how to look up information on CIP projects. Um, and, and then on your table, there should be a project name, like a table tip. You know? So your job to practice is to look on, is this every table with a laptop? Which tables don't have a laptop? Okay, that's okay. We will give you um, the actual handout so you can see what they look like. Or you can join a table with a laptop if you'd like. There's, I think there's some seats available, so you're welcome to join. Um, so on the back of this handout is a little worksheet for you to fill out. Asking you specific questions about the project. Um, if you have any questions, let me or Queen know.